Hey, welcome back to Rookie Roost. So it's official, I need to move. If you're new here, my name is Sean, and this series just follows the building of and life within a tiny house on wheels. So why do I need to move? Well, the warehouse that the tiny house is currently sitting in is definitely going to be getting more volume going in and out of it. So it's kind of in the way, and while I haven't been told to move, I'm gonna be proactive about this and just start making the preparations for it to happen and securing the place where it's going to be and then just moving it as soon as all that's ready to go. So believe it or not, I'm still not really done the exterior of the house. Yeah, you probably can believe that. The door is still a problem. So that's what I'm gonna tackle first. So every time I was going in and out of the tiny house for the past few months, I was noticing a weird smell. It would only appear as soon as you open the door and then it would kind of dissipate. But I tracked it down. That smell is coming from this corner. I'm pretty sure it's just rotten. Or something crawled in there somehow and died because it's not a good smell. I mean, it's kind of brown, I guess, and this isn't looking too good. It's got some like water damage there, so you know. So I'm gonna scrub that up and I'm going to, I don't even know, do something. I gotta do something. Look what happens when I squish this. I mean, ugh, that can't be good, right? Right? So I'm gonna start by cleaning it, trying to chip away any obviously rotten parts. Then I'm gonna caulk it, seal it up nicely, and then paint it. And hopefully that's all I gotta do. Okay, so I caulked this up and it's been a couple days and it's still a little squishy, so I'm gonna leave the door open a little longer and hopefully it gets cured before too long. So I'm gonna be moving the house on Monday, which means I've got the weekend to kind of get things in shape for that. And so what I'm doing right now is kind of getting all the tools and everything that's inside the house and around the house collected and organized. And I'm tying up a few loose ends. I've got a loose end right here. The storage area was never really finished, as you can see at the back there. That's just poly over insulation. So I'm gonna put a piece of plywood back there and I'm gonna finish all these tiles. I gotta cut a whole bunch to get down this side. And the last time I moved, I got this piece of plywood in here ready to go. Never really talked about it, but that's that. It's gonna have another hole in it somewhere around here for the drain from the sink. Believe it or not, I just crawled in there. You wouldn't think it could fit, but uh, just did. Kinda hot and sweaty in there. Okay, so it's finally all closed in. Time to cut those tiles. I think I mentioned it back in January, but these are made by a company called Swizz Tracks, and I'm just using a table saw to cut them, which is working out just fine. Not too bad. up on the roof, finally finishing something that should have been done about eight months ago. It's just a lot more of what I call robot work. I resent that remark. Robot work is admirable. All right, so it's July, which means it's officially been a year since the start of the build. Honestly, I thought we were gonna be done a long time ago. I'm setting an ambitious goal of being done by September. I highly doubt I'll make it, but the point is just to work a lot and to work hard. So the house has been moved, it's back at the farm. The move went just as smooth as last time, I used the same guy to tow it. I have a bit more space here than I did last time because I cut back about a meter and a half of that tall grass. Still have a nice grass wall next to the house on that side. But now I'm not super crushed up against the hedges that are on this side. So June wasn't exactly the most productive month, but I'm starting off July strong. This is the first wallboard that's gonna go on the inside of the house. And that wallboard is going right down here. This is the under kitchen storage. It's an area I just want completely finished. Now that I don't have an entire warehouse to kind of spread my tools all around, I need to find good spots to keep them and to always know where stuff is. So I want to finish this storage area off under here put down the tiles like I did on the outside, and then just have a great place for storing all the tools I'm gonna be using for the rest of the build. So a few episodes ago, I put the vapor barrier permanently over this part. Now I've done the same over here. I didn't film it because it was kind of cumbersome trying to figure out what I was doing, but I've got this all insulated under here now, and the vapor barrier is all taped up and good to go. So that's ready to receive a wall board, and I'm pretty excited to get it on there. And this one here is something I recently put in. I had to drill another hole through the flange down there. Actually, I drilled 
a few holes recently through the flange. Um, hopefully that's the last of the holes. I drilled out the drain for the shower and I drilled out where the power will actually come into the tiny house. So anyways, this one here, it has a little piece of conduit in here which goes straight through the wall and out through the flange. And that's just for fishing in ethernet lines or cable vision or telephone, whatever you want. This is going to be a modular faceplate. And so whatever I need or whoever else ends up owning the house at some point wants, they can just switch it out. You can stick your wireless router or modem under here or whatever. So I've just put a bit of primer on these boards. Well, it's a primer and a sealer. Apparently pretty good for moist areas. Not that these ones are particularly going in moist areas, but I want to make sure that they're going to be good with any kind of moisture. So one of the reasons I'm doing these boards first is because it gives me a chance to kind of experiment in an area that's going to stay hidden. I'm going to be using these inch and a quarter screws like I did for the ceiling panels, but they might not be the best way to go about this, so I'm going to try nails on some of it as well. Yeah, I think the screws suck the boards in a little too much, so I'm probably going to want to go with nails. So around the outlets, I've tried to do something a little clever. You can see that I've chiseled away where the flange of the electrical boxes is going to be, so that this will hopefully sit flat against the wall, rather than have any weird curves in it. So far, it seems to work the way I hope. I'm going to have to do that around all the outlets, and all of the little pieces of metal that are sticking out from the studs. Otherwise the wall just won't sit flat and I can't think of any other way around it. So over here I'm a bit further behind. This is a bit of a unique area because I've got the water that comes into the tiny house right there. I've got the main electrical line that comes into the house right here. I've got an electrical line that goes out of the house right here as well for an exterior power outlet. And I'm also gonna have a copper line that goes and attaches to the trailer frame itself in order to bond the trailer. Which means that if anything ever electrical happened to hit the actual metal of the trailer, it would have a route first to my breaker box and then to the main breaker box of wherever I'm parked. So I've already got the holes drilled through the flange for those things. And what I'm going to do for the electrical, at least for the bond cable and the power in cable, is run them through this bit of conduit just to keep them protected from any of the sharp edges that might be in the hole. So the hole that's going to take the bond cable has actually been there for a while. That was the original hole for the water line? Yeah, for the water line. And the water line is now going through the original hole for the propane, which if you watched the last couple episodes, the propane system was entirely redone. So it's a much bigger hole than this little six gauge wire that has to go through it. So I'm going to fill up most of the hole, hopefully, just with a little piece of tube insulation. So what I want to be able to do is fill the wall with insulation here, cover it with vapor barrier, put the piece of uh, 2x6 that goes back on here and across there that holds the floor, and then be able to put the wall board on, put the floor back on, and carry on, probably with electrical. I really gotta get that done. So that's why I'm doing this now, because I want to be able to fill this with insulation, and I just need to be able to get this through, and then I can do that. And again, this is just so that if anything electrical should hit the metal of the trailer, or the propane lines, or anything, it's got a direct route to the bonding bus, which will be grounded. I don't know if my terminology is all correct here, but it'll be safe. It'll go where bad electricity goes. What do you mean bad electricity? No such thing. Yeah, if you say so. So this big honking cable here, that's the main line in. This one's got up to 50 amps, which is the most uh, I'd ever have coming in here. All right, it's ready to be insulated. We got water, we got the bonding wire, and I've got the uh, water heater still sitting here as always. Main 50 amp cord in. We've got, this is going to be the outlet that will have the 12 volt system running off of it for the water heater. Then we've got a wire behind that which goes outside to an exterior outlet. And that's it. Time to fill all that with insulation. Lucky me, all three of these wall sections are the right width for insulation. to get a full piece of insulation in here so I tacked those wires up to the four foot height of a bat of insulation. So this is 
Kind of a cluster of cluster of cables here, but I'm pretty sure that's okay. And all those cables will need to go through that piece of fire blocking into the breaker box. Let's get this done. All right, I hope that's all done right and all those wires back there are done right as well because I'm done here and uh, I really don't want to have to redo it. As you can see, this wall board isn't done yet because I totally forgot there was going to be an outlet right there and did not cut the hole for it. So I will have to do that again. I am kind of exhausted. It was a hot day and this window lets in too much light. Anyways, oh yeah. So I've got the kitchen floor back on. Happy about that, it's much safer in here and I can store stuff underneath of it again, which will come in handy. Got the good ladder back on, now I can get back up into the loft safely, which is important. Now it's time to tackle this side of the house. I'd really like to get the shower area all done and boarded in and insulated and whatnot so that I can put the shower back in place and then have the rest of the bathroom as storage. So I may tackle that next, or I may just try to get more electrical done since that's the never ending project I'm on right now. Either way, I will see you next week. Don't forget to like and leave a comment and subscribe if you're new. See you next time at The Roost.